Hi everyone, so I think this is our 11th pack. In the first lesson, I might try and see how far we can get, see if we can get through to there. Um, it's all about trig, we're carrying on with trig, it's really, really nice. It's quite nice this, because we don't normally do this bit. Um, but you know, from, from So Cartoa, there. If I look at the triangle that I've got here, Cos is the adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 1. So what that's telling me is if I plot the x values, I get y equals cos theta. There. And then if I look at the sine graph, the sine graph is the opposite, which is y over the hypotenuse, which is 1. So if I plot the y values, I get y equals sine theta. So that's where your graph comes from. So like your cos graph comes from like that, from 0 to 360, because there's 0, there's 90, there's 180, there's 270, and then back to 360. So it kind of plots its x value between 1 and minus 1. And the same with the sine graph, it plots it. Tan's interesting though, because we know that the gradient is a change going up divided by a change going across. So on this on this triangle, my change going up is y, my change going across is x. But y, uh, I'm going, why have we got y twice here? Ugh, I should say x equals the donkey. Uh, so y is sine theta over cos theta. There, which is what we know it is. So my tan theta is actually the gradient. So it's y over x, which is sine theta over cos theta. And that's quite nice, that. But if you plotted the gradient on it, you'd get the tan graph. Not many people know that. It's not really something that we kind of push. Right, so it says here, using these definitions, uh, we can get values of sine cos tan for any angle. Um, we always measure them positive in an anti-clockwise way from here. So we always kind of go that way around, there, which is what they've got. Now with this one here, with this one, if you look, this angle here, this quadrant covers 0 to 90 degrees. It's acute. Whereas what this next one's talking about, it's doing from 90 degrees to 180. So this quadrant is obtuse. Oops, the E's and the S is all gone wrong. Now, if you look for cos, well, we'll look at the triangle actually. Going across is negative. Put minus X there. Going across is negative, but the y value here is still positive if I do it as a coordinate. So it says here, so in the pack it says cos theta is negative. And this is because the x coordinate is negative. Whereas for sine, that's positive, it's got a positive y value. And that's because your y coordinate is positive there. Because remember, you're plotting, the cos graph comes from plotting your x values, and the sine graph comes from plotting your y values. So tan is also negative because the gradient is negative. Because it's y over x, so it's plus over minus, which is going to give you a negative value. There. I hope that kind of makes sense. So we can do it for the others as well, looking at the different quadrants. Uh, but I'm not going to bother. <laughs> oh no, I should have done shouldn't have done the other. They never really ask you for the, the next bit. Uh, I just need to yeah, expand my page a bit. And I'll just do it for the other quadrants. They don't, they don't ask for it, but never mind, let's do it. So 180 to 270. Sine 
theta is negative, there, because my y value, if it's in that third quadrant down here, my y value is negative, and cos theta is negative, which is nice because negative over negative means that tan theta is positive. I might have to show you this on the picture. 270 to 360 degrees, so I'm over here now, so my x is positive and my y is negative. Uh, so if x is positive, then cos theta is positive. Sine theta is negative because my y value is negative in that fourth quadrant. So tan theta must also be negative because it's a, it's a, a different sign. So there you go. Right, so let's have a quick look at the next pair, which is what theory here. So the idea is that I'm plotting the x and the y. So I get these graphs from plotting x and plotting y, or y and x. And I get that graph from plotting the tangent. At some points, I get a divide by 0, and that introduces an asymptote. So on your tan graph, you've got an asymptote. It also goes between plus or minus infinity, where the other graphs go between plus or minus 1. There. Next. I always think we're most interested in the acute and the obtuse. And this graph is just showing us that for acute, they are all positive. On the obtuse, there is only sign is positive. Cos and tan are negative. There. And then you've got the other bits as well, which we're not worried about. Uh, so then it talks about, ooh, look at this. So angles outside 0 to 360. So it repeats itself. Every 360 it repeats itself. So I kind of just need to take off um, quantities of 360. So it says 600 is really the same as 240. On the old spec, we used to do a lot more on this one, but we don't really bother with this. Now you can, from the triangles that you saw at school, uh, the exact triangles, just let me expand this page a little bit. You can get these kind of identities of these specific ratios. So if you think about a 30 60, it's half of a 2 2 2 triangle. So if I ignore that kind of half of it, I've got a 2, a 1, and a root 3. That's my 60, that's my 30. You can't really tell on the picture. Maybe you can on yours. So sine of 30 is the opposite, which is 1 over the hypotenuse. Should we go? Should we stick with the 30 degrees? So cos of 30 will be root 3 over 2. Tan of 30, which is opposite over adjacent, will be 1 over root 3, which serves up as root 3 over 3. We then sine 60, so if we look at this bottom bit down here now for 60, sine 60 is opposite, which is root 3 over hypotenuse. Cos is one up, well, adjacent over hypotenuse, and six, tan 60 is opposite over adjacent, root 3. What I quite like is the fact that sine 30 and cos 60 are the same. Sine 60 and cos 30 are the same. And these are upside down. This is interesting because if I had, say, sine of 1 degree, that's the same as cos of. And because these add up to 90, it's the same as cos of 89 degrees. It's an interesting thing to know. The, I'm running out of time now, the 45 degree triangle, that's even easier. So that's just 1 over root 2, which serves up as root 2 over 2. That's 1 over root 2, which serves up as root 2 over 2, and makes that one. Job done. Finish there. Just, yeah, I'll stop there.